Visa. Okay, Visa. So this is the company that I wanted to share with you guys about. Okay, so today we're going to talk about this company called Visa. Uh, I love this company. I love this company. Yeah, in fact, I have been, I, I, I know this company for a long time. But the thing is, I haven't really done any research on it. Uh, and and I'm, I'm not sure why, but uh, yeah, up till today, I haven't really done an, an, an in-depth understanding on Visa on its own. But I'm sure we can agree that we love this company. We have been using it. Uh, in fact, right now, if you're doing online shopping and things like that, you know, the, the usage of Visa is even higher. It has a strong branding. You know, the moment people see the word Visa, it gives you a sense of uh, security. You know, so that is why it's actually one of the highest uh, ranking in terms of branding in the whole wide world. So today we're going to deep dive into this company called Visa during our buy or buy series. Like I said, this is a BUY company, okay? I really tell you upfront that uh, this is a company that you can buy right now. Uh, but before that, I just want to go through some of the key points, uh, my personal understanding, uh, my personal view, you know, before you actually make your decision. Right, and of course, don't forget, don't forget, we have a lot of amazing videos that we have already done on you for you on YouTube. So please do subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can actually watch uh, all the series. If let's say you miss any of the future series, you can go there and you can actually watch our buy or buy series. All right, and before I continue again, very important is to do a disclaimer so that I can actually allow me to share upfront openly whatever I feel uh, about this company. So although yes, today is going to be a BUY, that is my personal opinion, but it is very important for you guys to actually do your own due diligence as well. Go and check. Go and double check, uh, make sure that the information that I provided for you is correct. Okay, and then uh, if you think that this is a good company, feel free to actually go ahead and invest in this company. All right, so again, the format is going to be in this particular format based on big profit. So we're going to talk about the background of this company and then we're going to talk about the industry of the payment system and, and things like that. Then we're going to talk about what are some of the growth factors for Visa. We're going to compare with some of the peers. And then we talk about some of the risk factor as well as the opportunity for this particular business. And lastly, we're going to look at the numbers whereby we look at the uh, financial statement. Okay. And everything is very, very well structured. Right. So starting with the background again, uh, I want to actually make things easier for you guys. So I actually prepared a short video for you. So this video basically tells you what does Visa do. And we will be surprised that a lot of people actually don't really understand how this company uh, does and what exactly does Visa do? So sit back, relax, and enjoy this short video first. Almost everyone knows the Visa brand, one of the most trusted and recognizable in the world. But not everyone knows what Visa does. A credit card company. Not a credit card company. It's a bank company. Nope. They loan money. Try again. They lend the money to you and then they charge your bank account later. Sorry. I have no idea. Oh! Can I, can I have a clue? Visa is a payments technology company that facilitates commerce around the world. Whether you are making a purchase, sending money to a friend, or part of a business moving money to another business. Visa pioneered the electronic payments business more than 60 years ago, envisioning a world in which paying for something could be translated into electrons and photons that move across the globe at the speed of light. The consumer uh, may access an infinite range of goods and services whenever he chooses, wherever he may be. Today, there are more than 3 billion Visa accounts around the world in more than 200 countries and territories. During fiscal year 2019, more than 200 billion payments and cash transactions were made with the Visa brand, representing more than 11 trillion in payments and cash volume, from the largest cities to remote communities across the globe. Each transaction made on the Visa network represents a packet of data that moves across a massive telecommunications network, more than 10 million miles in length end to end. The network is made up of fiber, ethernet, wireless, satellite, and virtual connections, linking consumers, businesses, governments, and financial institutions. The journey of each transaction starts with you. When you click, swipe, dip, or tap to pay, data about the transaction travels from the store owner to their bank or processor, which captures the information and sends it to VisaNet. 
VisaNet uses artificial intelligence technology to analyze every aspect of the transaction to determine the level of risk for fraud. VisaNet routes the information to the bank that issued the customer's credit or debit account Continue. and its own data about the account. Traveling back through VisaNet, the approved request returns to the store owner, where the transaction is completed. Later on, Visa makes sure the money is transferred. This authorization all happens in less than one second, whether you're in Miami, Madrid, or Mumbai. Making sure that every transaction flows instantly are several global data centers, synchronized in real time so that if one system experiences issues, another picks up. Software developers and other partners can use Visa's developer tools to build innovative ways to pay. As a payments leader, Visa is extending the boundaries of our network and the potential of billions of connected devices, bringing the security and reliability of our brand to customers across the entire payments ecosystem. Digital commerce can extend to even the most remote regions, where people who don't typically bank can access the benefits of mobile technology. Despite the growth of digital payments, about 1.7 billion people still lack access to formal financial services, and consumers spend nearly 17 trillion in cash and checks. Meeting this opportunity is the mission of Visa's more than 19,000 employees committed to accelerating the global migration to digital payments to enable individuals, businesses, and economies to thrive. You might not know what Visa does because the inner workings of our network are not visible when you're making a payment, and they shouldn't be. Speed, security, and convenience are what drive our business, so you can get on with yours, no matter how, when, and where you choose to pay. Okay, yeah, so this is, this is really, really cool. So if you actually uh, like this video, can you just type in Visa in the chat group, Visa, B-I-S-A. Okay, I think this is a very well, uh, well, well done video. Basically, it actually comprises a lot of the things that I wanted to share. And of course, very importantly, is that people have this perception that Visa is a credit card. Uh, Visa basically provides loans to people and things like that. Okay, but the thing is, no. So I'm going to break down and make things as simple as it is uh, to explain to you what Visa actually does. So in short, Visa, okay, it is the world's leaders in digital payment. Do you still remember the days whereby everything is transacted through cash? Okay, everything is transacted through cash. There's no way we can actually transfer money uh, via online. There's no such thing as digital payment. So uh, then, of course, Visa came out and, of course, that started the whole digital payment thingy. So Visa Net is the whole ecosystem for Visa and it is actually an advanced global processing network. So what Visa actually provides, it is this processing network that they actually have, which is the Visa Net. And Visa Net provides secure and reliable payments around the world. So nowadays, when you actually transfer cash from Singapore to, let's say, UK, and you want to buy something from uh, Alibaba or even in somewhere in US through Amazon, you realize that you, you actually believe that this thing is actually done, you know, securely and reliable. And that is because of the branding that Visa has already built up so that whenever people actually see the Visa logo, they actually feel secure and they know that their payment is going to be processed uh, well and it is definitely going to be safe. And of course, uh, with their system, okay, again, it is state one or state of the art, uh, the system are able, capable of processing over 65,000 transactions per second. So can you imagine over the whole wide world, so many people are swiping their card at the same time. People are tapping their, 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 their credit card. Um, nowadays, even you can use your smartphone to actually uh, connect to your, to your credit card and things like that. So there's so many processes and you need a very, very advanced system to be able to do that. And basically, Visa is definitely one of the leaders lah, and they are able to actually process it at very, very high speed. So this is just some of the facts uh, and numbers. Uh, as we can see that over the whole wide world, let's start with the top. Uh, there's 3.3 billion cards worldwide with the Visa logo. And of course, Visa is everywhere. Uh, 200 countries and territories, a lot of banks use it. Uh, and you can see 46 million merchant location in different currencies. You know. uh, so these are basically what Visa do. So everything is connected through this thing called the Visa Net. So let's talk about the business revenue. Okay, what are some of the ways that this company actually generate the revenue? So the first one is, of course, service revenue. 
whereby you actually use a Visa product, that means your credit card, every time you swipe, you actually have to pay Visa a certain fee. Okay, of course, most of the time we do not have to pay as the consumer. The merchants, they actually have to pay a 2 to 3% uh, Visa service fee to Visa. So every time you swipe your credit card using Visa, Visa get a, get a part of it. Okay. Can you imagine buying your air ticket, which is $1,000 using your Visa card? A 3% can be $30. So every time you swipe, Visa gets money. Every time you swipe, Visa gets money. So And this happens almost instantaneously. Everywhere in the whole wide world, people are swiping their card. So that's how they actually generate. And you can see that it's only generating about 33% from the service. So the other 36% actually comes from data processing revenue. Like I said, this whole network is not that easy to actually process. So uh, the underlying infrastructure and the things that they actually process, they actually charge a fee also. But of course, again, these are actually mainly charged to the financial intermediaries, to all the big companies as well, to help them to process all this data. So that also contribute about 36% of visa revenue and of course for the last one nowadays uh, when we transfer cash we don't just transfer singapore to singapore malaysia to malaysia we are doing a lot of cross-border transfer of currencies so international transaction revenues is actually at 27 percent and this is one of the highest growth uh, in terms of visa business segment it is actually something that it is still growing really really fast because of e-commerce because of the way business is operating Business are no longer constrict to a certain demographic. You know, people can do business everywhere. And that is something that is definitely very interesting for Visa. And of course, other revenues uh, that contributes 4%, uh, and that are very, very, very small thing. So let's look at, you know, the business segments uh, comparison uh, year over year. You can see that from 2017 to, to 2018 to 2019, all four different segments have been growing. So you can see that Visa doesn't just focus on one area, but instead from the service to the data process to the international transaction, you know, they are all increasing really, really, really fast. And that really shows that it is not just about this company, it is actually about the whole industry as well. The whole industry is actually in a very, very high pace, a high growth uh, area. So of course, right now, I'm going to talk about one of the key products that Visa actually offers, and that is the Visa Checkout. So nowadays, if you go to your online e-commerce or some of the online shop, you realize that there will be this particular logo. So why Visa Checkout is actually a good way to actually pay online. As you can see, it is convenient, it is flexible, it is secure, and there's actually a lot of tie-up that they actually do to promote certain products as well. And of course, you can see that these are some of the familiar brands that we have in Singapore. So your cinema, Golden Village, and Shaw, even your grocery, fair price, cold storage, giant. Uh, even right now with insurance, you can actually use the Visa checkout as well to actually pay for your insurance. And of course, your online shopping, Q10, uh, and of course, your traveling like uh, Emirates and Zuji and Batam Pass if you want to go to Batam really fast. Yeah. So these are all the way that you can actually use the Visa checkout, which is all mainly on the online platform and right now uh, there's also another product that visa is offering which is the visa token service and this is actually implemented only in 2019 uh, it is currently live in 100 markets with 410 million tokens issued to date okay probably you'll be thinking what exactly is this visa token i don't remember receiving any kind of token from visa so this visa token actually replaces a customer's card related sensitive information with a unique identifier or token. So remember in the past when you want to transfer your money, you need to key in your credit card information, which is your PIN, the, all the numbers, okay, including the last three digit and expiry date and stuff like that. But right now you realize that uh, you don't really need to fill up all this information and it can actually be processed is actually done through this particular technology advancement, okay, which is the token services, whereby they actually translate all this information into a very a coding, okay, a specific coding that is tagged to each individual one of us. So using this coding, what happened is that it can actually be used uh, with many, many other technological advancements. For example, your Apple Pay, your Google Pay, your Samsung Pay, all those is done actually using this Visa token service. So that is why you remember, remember when you actually want to use this particular services, you actually have to go and enroll for it. Okay, so when you enroll for it, basically you're getting this token. 
So you're transferring your credit card details into this token and then using this token, it can be actually tagged to your Apple phone, your Google phone or any of the other phone, okay, for your payment system. And this is actually, like I said, this is actually still growing. Uh, many people are actually starting to use it as well. And of course, there are also many other payment methods improving the payment experience. For example, things like contactless right now, all you can do is you can just tap your phone uh, and you can make payment. Uh, there's a lot of vendors and merchants using QR code. And of course, right now, the last one is actually using Bluetooth Low Energy to make purchase from anywhere in the stores. So all this is to improve the user experience, the customer buying experience and paying experience. So much so that when you're actually paying for something, you don't even feel it as compared to, you know, last time we have to take out cash, we have to go to ATM, you know, and things like that. Right now, everything is wireless, everything is digital. And that is where Visa actually came in. So Visa is actually everywhere, part of our life. That's so much so that we didn't even realize that all this actually comes from, you know, Visa uh, and of course, some of the other vendors out there as well. So now we want to look at the industry, okay, the whole industry of digital payment. Okay, let's just focus on where we are right now, which is the Southeast Asia. So we can see that for the past 10 years, Southeast Asia has tremendous growth, uh, new technology, expanded internet access, and increased mobile devices ownership. All this is actually something that really pushed uh, Visa and to re really expand the digital payment uh, method. So what we are doing right now is we are actually moving from a cash-based society into a digital economy. So this is basically the country, okay, on the consumers who prefer to use cards over cash. We can see that 76% of Singaporeans prefer to use card over cash. And of course, the overall Southeast Asia is at 61%. Certain country, they are still not that used to it. Okay, but even we look at the lowest, which is Philippines, 46% of the people actually still pre also prefer card than cash. And that is still a huge number. But like I said, for places like Philippines and Vietnam, it simply means that there is still a lot of potential growth in that particular area because the use of cards and digital payment is still relatively low. So it means that, you know, as people get used to it and things become more and more common, uh, Visa has room to actually make more money from there as well. And so these are, very, these are some very interesting facts. Huh? The top reason why cards are actually preferred, okay, in Malaysia, Vietnam and Indonesia, people want to use card was because they found that cards are actually safer than cash. Okay, but of course in Singapore, we all know that we prefer cards because it is actually more convenient and things like that. But apparently in Malaysia, Vietnam and Indonesia, they prefer card because yeah, they want to prevent theft. Lah. So basically, if let's say the thief uh, take, your, take your credit card, uh, you can actually immediately cancel your card. So they won't be able to get any money out of you as compared to holding huge amount of cash in your wallet. And these are also part of the cash habit and the reason why consumers are carrying less cash. So, of course, the main reason is more card usage. Uh, that means people are using more card for, for everything that they use. Lah. Okay, and that is why they start to actually bring less and less cash. So, of course, the second highest is cash is unsafe. Uh, then, of course, 41% is because nowadays there's a lot of ATM and that's why people are carrying less and less cash because I, if I don't have cash, if I run out of cash, I can just go to a nearby ATM and actually withdraw more. Things like that. Okay, so this is the average number of payment cards owned in the different countries of Southeast Asia. Okay, this is based on 2015. We can see that Singapore is the highest at 2.67. And like I said, this number will continue to grow. Uh, I would say that maybe, maybe right now, I will just do a quick survey. How many credit cards do you guys actually own? How many payment cards? So it can be Visa debit, Visa credit, okay? Roughly, roughly how many cards do you actually own? Can you just put into the chat group? Yeah, this is based on 2015. So I do agree that this number seems to be a little bit on the lower side, a little bit conservative. <laughs> well, Paul have eight to 10. Wow, and Rachel have five. Uh, Jack, Akel, did I see wrongly? 17. <laughs> Okay, interesting, interesting. More than five. Used to have, used to have more than 10. <laughs> 17 is the winner. Yes, definitely, definitely. 
Okay, yeah, we can see that in Singapore, the use of card is just getting more and more common. And in fact, I know that people have different card for different usage. For example, if you want to pump petrol, you use this card. If you are going to the groceries, you use this card. If you want to do online shopping, you use another card. You know, that, that I, I don't know how you guys manage. Yeah, but congratulations to the 17. You are, you are, we are really the winner. And thanks for contributing to Visa and maybe MasterCard and Amex. All right. Okay, so very interesting. Huh? Right, so over here, you can see that right, there's actually significant opportunity to displace cash further. Let's just focus on this. In Vietnam, okay, card payment only make up 3%. Okay, currently, uh, right now, I think this was a uh, result based on one or two years back, but card payments only make up 3%, which means that a lot of Vietnamese are not using card yet. Okay, but of course, this means that there's huge potential, uh, huge opportunity in the future. And actually, 50% of e-commerce spending is driven by card payment, and the rest is cash on delivery. Yeah. So again, it simply means that even uh, with e-commerce, some people actually still prefer to pay through cash. Yeah. I think right now, even for example, in Singapore, we have Carousel. Uh, Carousel is also using Visa as well. Okay, to actually uh, make the payment first instead of transferring in cash. Okay, so right now, very interestingly, I know you all will be interested to find out what is the uh, comparison between Visa and some of the competitors. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to focus on a few areas. This might be something different. So first of all, we know that the key competitor of Visa is basically people who are using the non-digital payment. Okay, paper-based payment like cash and check. So all these people who are not using digital payment, they are considered Visa competitor. Okay, or rather opportunity for Visa to actually uh, capture. Right, and of course, if you look at the other electronic payment, okay, in terms of the competitor, okay, these are some of the brands that have a global or multi-regional networks. That means they are actually in, uh, the networks is everywhere as well. Pretty much similar to Visa. We have MasterCard, Amex, Discover, Union Pay, as well as JCB. Okay, maybe back to this. So one thing about this is for JCB, you know that JCB is very, concentrated on a particular country. So JCB is for Japan. Union Pay is mainly in China. So China, uh, people actually uses Union Pay. And uh, of course, Discover is actually in the US. So many of this uh, payment system, some of them, they are actually very localized in their own country only. Yeah, And of course, we know for MasterCard and Amex, they are pretty much uh, across the whole world. So right now, we just want to see, uh, Visa is actually the largest retail electronic fund transfer networks. Uh, if you look at the comparison between the second place, okay, Visa is in the first place, second place MasterCard is almost half, okay, the payment volume, the total volume, the total transaction, the number of cards, and everything is easily a 30 to 40% uh, lower than Visa. So in terms of the market share, Visa is definitely a lot larger, okay. Uh, of course, we can also compare with Amex, is even smaller, GCB, Diners Club, and all that is just very, very small. So the closest competitor that I can actually see is actually MasterCard. All right. So of course, other than the global uh, network, we also have the local and regional networks. So for example, in US, these are also some of the ways people can actually do digital transfer, uh, Star, NYCE, and Pulse. And of course, in, in Canada, they have this thing called Interact, Australia, they use EFT, POS, and Russia, they use MIR. So all these are very much very local based. And of course, we have alternative payment providers. Okay, so all these alternative payment providers, they are actually both partner and competitor. So for instance, I can give you is PayPal, and of course, we have Stripe as well. So they do provide payment transfer as well uh, in terms of digital payment. Uh, but later, I'm going to touch to you why, you know, competitor like PayPal and Stripe, they are both partner as well as competitor because there are certain things that PayPal and Stripe are not able to provide and they actually still have to look to Visa to actually provide it inside their services. So uh, very, very interesting uh, competitor, you know, love-hate relationship, things like that. And of course, we have the uh, clearing house, okay, as well as the real-time payment networks. So these are mainly for the banks, uh, interbank transfer. Right, so now we look at the growth, okay, the growth potential of Visa. So like I said, uh, over the whole wide world, there are still so many people that actually still do not have access to uh, financial services, okay. 1.7 billion worldwide still lack access to formal financial services. So again, this is something that Visa is uh, 
trying to help also. In a way, they are also helping the country to build it to become more developed. Okay, and also building up the financial service in uh, certain countries that are relatively more undeveloped. So Visa scan to pay services has emerged successfully as a low cost acceptance solution for merchants. So in certain countries whereby all this payment is not so accessible, for example, in Singapore, you know, if let's say I open a 7-Eleven shop and I want to take Visa, you will need to have the, 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 the uh, Visa, Visa machine. Okay, remember we all have that Visa machine. So the thing is, in certain countries uh, whereby the internet and things like that is still not that accessible, so it's hard for every merchant to actually have that Visa machine and things like that. So what is this scan to pay services? It's actually like a QR code, all right? That even small vendors, all they need to do is they just need to apply it and Visa will actually give them that QR code and people can actually scan that QR, QR code to actually make payment. Something that is similar is our pay now and our pay anyone in Singapore. Okay, right now I think it's getting more and more common as well. And of course, what are some of the other growth factor is that Visa can actually create new categories okay, for people to start to use payment as a service. So for example, your renter. Okay, how do you actually pay renter right now? Most of the time when we actually pay our landlord, we do bank transfer, we do gyro and things like that. So uh, renter can actually be transacted through Visa as well. Okay, and of course, parking. Uh, right now, of course, uh, in the past, we actually have that you know that rectangular thing for us to actually do the parking right now with the parking app parking.sg uh, again you can see parking.sg they are collaborating with visa and all the payment system so yes in singapore uh, all your parking and everything is already uh, combined with visa but of course if you go through your normal gantry and things like that we are still using your cash card okay we still have to use the cash card and things like that but i would say that moving forward uh, where everything is more integrated okay everything could be connected to your visa. That means your, as long as your car parks inside the car park, uh, maybe for, you know, everything is automatically calculated through satellite and things like that and they will deduct automatically through your credit card. So all that payment transfer that is being done, you know, visa is actually one of the vendors that is able to provide uh, infrastructure for payment transfer. And of course, vending machine. Right now, we all realize that vending machine most of the time is still using cash. But of course, moving forward, uh, there will be more and more vending machine that actually allows credit card, you know, simply just tap and you can actually pay. And I think it's going to be more and more common uh, throughout the whole wide world. So these are basically uh, categories that used to use cash, you know, but can actually move forward to actually adopt digital payment uh, so that it's actually more wider use for digital payment. And of course, we can see that for cross-border transaction in the past, because of internet access, because of the way business is being conducted, it is not that common. But right now, uh, cross-border e-commerce is so common. Uh, it is a 990 billion market in 2020. And even with this 990 billion, it is only 22% of the global e-commerce market. So huge potential over here huge potential over here like i said the technology to transfer money locally and the technology to transfer money overseas because there is also the currency difference and things like that it is a whole new level and of course visa because they are the world leader in digital payment they are actually getting a huge uh, i think they are in the right area to actually come in to facilitate the cross-border transaction and that is why you realize that in the past if you want to transfer money uh, overseas you know, it might take two working days, three working days, you know, for the whole thing, for the money to actually transfer. But right now, uh, there's actually immediate real-time transfer, whereby if you want to transfer money to maybe US or even overseas, it can be done within seconds as well. So all this can be done, again, only through uh, Visa Network. So strategic acquisition, okay, these are also how Visa continue to grow, to become larger, to become better. Uh, they actually acquired this company called Earthport, so Earthport operates the largest independent account clearing house okay, in the whole wide world. Uh, so because of this acquisition, Visa is right now able to reach 99% of the world bank population in 88 countries. So pretty much, I would say, as long as you have a bank account, Visa will have access to your information. Okay, So that is how powerful it is. So this acquisition, like I said, not only significantly increases Visa reach, it also delivers a simplified and more cost-effective cross-border payment and money movement experience to both consumer as well as small businesses. 
this acquisition was actually done in 2019. So like I said, this is actually one of the key milestones for Visa to continue to dominate their world leaders position. So uh, with this, I find that you know, it's hard for you know, MasterCard to even come close to Visa. Okay, now of course we want to also talk about the risks. So far I've been talking about most of the good point about Visa. Okay, let's also understand what are some of the risks. So in terms of the technology, we do understand that right now there's a lot of new technology that's coming up. There's new payment methods from competitors as well as fintech. Okay, then of course we have our Libra Association, which is uh, from Facebook. All right, launching a new stable coin, uh, rather a cryptocurrency called Libra coin. And a global blockchain-based payment networks is also uh, being built up very quickly across the whole wide world with the blockchain technology. So these are some of the uncertainty that brings uh, when it comes to digital payment. But like I said, again, uh, Visa, because again, they are actually one of the world's leader, they do participate in many of this blockchain as well. All right. So even if, let's say, moving forward next time, blockchain will be to be one of the key thing in the uh, digital payment transfer, I would say that Visa definitely will also have a stake in it. So then, of course, we look at countries that are developing their domestic network and real-time payment system. So like I said, just now, countries, within countries, they actually use their own uh, network system okay, to transfer funds. So in Singapore right now, we're actually uh, using this thing called PayNow. So PayNow is actually developed by the Association of Bank in Singapore, ABS. Uh, I, I, I tried to find out exactly which platform they use, uh, whether maybe because the technology could also be partly from Visa or maybe MasterCard. Okay, but so far, you know, I, I can't dig any information out of it. Lah. So basically, from what I know, I, I rather assume that it is being done in-house. Okay, so the government, Singapore government actually created this on their own. So you can see in PayNow offers digital transfer, okay, between banks in Singapore. So as long as you have a PayNow pay now account, you can actually transfer it to your friend. So this is what we meant by P2P, which is peer-to-peer. Okay. So remember, in the past, it's not easy. It's not that easy for you to actually transfer money from your account to other to another person account. But right now, with all this pay now, it is so easy. It is so easy to transfer cash uh, here and there, and there's no transaction fee. And of course, what is C to B? C to B basically means a uh, consumer to business. So right now, if you want to make payment, uh, you can also use pay now uh, to actually make payment to a certain business. You see, certain coffee shop they actually have the QR code. All right, and of course, uh, even online. I see some of the, uh, for example, for example, okay, you asked me to sing, right? So for example, if I sing, I can also put my QR code for my PayNow account. So if you like my singing, you can actually PayNow me uh, some money. Right? If you don't like my singing, you can also PayNow me some money, all right, to support me. So that's how consumer can actually transfer money to businesses. And of course, we have your G2C, okay, G2C, uh, which definitely we are all familiar with it because recently we received $600. So remember, for those of you who have a PayNow account, how the government actually transfer money from them to you is through PayNow. And that is what we meant by G2C, government to consumer. Yeah. So if you do not have a PayNow account, you realize that it will take longer days for you to actually receive the fund because they have to go through the usual way of money transfer, which is relatively slower. Yeah. So that is actually more on the risk side. So yeah. And of course, we look at the opportunity uh, in terms of this company. So, uh, Visa is actually doing this thing called tap to pay. Okay, that means they are encouraging people to actually make payment just by tapping. Uh, so again, this is a huge target group. They have 17 trillion in consumer spending, you know, and 15 to 20 billion of B2B spending currently still being done in cash. So for example, if you go to your mama store, if you go to your Kopitiam, uh, Many times we still use cash as transaction, but again, uh, moving forward, you know, Visa is trying to make everybody pay in just by tapping your card. All right, so that is what we meant by tap to pay. Mm -hmm. So you can see in US, outside of the US, tap to pay represents more than 50% of face to face transaction. All right, so which means that more, most of the people, more than half of the people are already using, you know, tapping to pay. Yeah, but of course, there is still a huge uh, percentage that is not yet using it. Uh, in US, however, US it seems to be a little bit slower. Uh, the percentage of people using tap to pay is actually lower than 50%. Okay, so in US, actually, people are still using cash. Uh, I would say more than 50% of the people are still using cash for payment. 
And of course, we talk about the users and the merchant. Uh, there's actually over 100 million Visa contactless card in US. So in order for you to be able to tap and pay, first of all, the card must be a contactless card that enable you to actually just tap and pay. Uh, more than 80 out of Visa top 100 merchants in the US have enabled customers to tap to pay at checkout. So I would say that this has to be done not just from the customer point of view, the merchant must also provide these services. Okay, the merchant must also provide these services. So if you go to any major shopping mall right now, I'm sure that right now if you want to use your PayWave and things like that, you definitely can have it. But of course, if you go to a food court or you go to a Kopitiam, uh, maybe you realize that right now they, they still do not have the tap to pay. Uh, but moving forward, I say that this is going to become more and more common and pretty much all you need to do when you go out, you just need to bring your card. And of course, uh, what are some of the deployment for tap to pay? You can see that it's also being deployed on transit, which is your train as well as your buses. So this is being conducted in New York. So New York uh, line, okay, actually pilot this on their subway as well as their bus line, whereby instead of your EasyLink card, instead of your EasyLink card, all you need to do is you can actually just tap your credit card, okay, and you can actually uh, go through. So this would actually reduces your need to actually bring multiple cards. So all you need to do is just bring your credit card. And of course, for those of you who actually have linked your credit card to your smartphone, okay, because of the token, because of the Visa token technology, so you can also use your phone, your smartphone, your Samsung Pay or your uh, Apple Watch. Sometimes I see people using the Apple Watch to go and tap. You can also use that to actually, uh, you know, take, take, your, take your public transport. La. So again, like I said, this is something that is being implemented worldwide. Uh, so we should be able to see this getting more and more common throughout the whole wide world, uh, including Singapore as well. So you can see that for Singapore as well, we have actually used the Visa contactless payment in 2019. So not that long ago, about uh, eight or nine months back. Okay, so again, this is actually used uh, using your Visa Pay, eh, sorry, your Apple Pay, your Fitbit Pay, your Google Pay, Samsung Pay. So you need to actually link it to your phone in order for you to actually use it. So you can't actually use your credit card. I'm not sure if you can, but as of now, based on what I see here, you need to link it to your credit, to your phone, then you can actually uh, do it. So like I said, the whole thing about this is it basically enhances the travel experience for commuters and it makes things easier for us because like I said, you don't need to carry so many cards uh, out when you actually go out. You have, can basically throw away your cash card, your EasyLink card or whatever card. You just need to bring your phone. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Nowadays with your phone, everything is being done over the phone. Okay, and so right now, okay, maybe you're just, uh, if you are still following me so far, can you just type in an 888? Can you just type in an 888? Uh, let's just take a quick quick break uh, to make sure that you guys are still here. <laughs> wow, we have 73, 73 participants on Facebook, oh no, sorry, on Zoom. Okay, interesting. Uh, yeah, by the way, if you actually privately message me, I won't be, I won't be really able to see it. So later on, I'll actually answer your question. Okay, yeah, so, so far, I think it has been pretty interesting. I actually, when I did the research, it gave me a lot of insights. Uh, and it really uh, tell me exactly what I see in Singapore. We see all these things being implemented, you know. Uh, so I always, I always thought that all these payment transfer and things like that is being done by the government or done by the bank. But in fact, it is actually all done by all these credit card, uh, Visa and MasterCard and all this technology. So very, very uh, related to us. So of course, e-commerce, we can see that the digital commerce growth is outpacing physical retail growth. So we want to present an opportunity to evolve both the security and consumer experience among, among e-commerce. So you can see that for e-commerce, right, it's a little bit different. Of course, the first thing is user experience. So people want to make it easier for you to actually pay. The second thing that people are concerned when it comes to online payment is actually the security portion. And that is also something that Visa is really, really strong. They focus a lot on security, okay, and making sure that uh, whatever transaction they even have. Uh, basically, right, just to, just to sum it all, uh, every transaction that, that you tap, for example, it is being authenticated by AI. So the AI actually makes sure that, you know, this transaction is real, it is not a fraud and things like that. And everything happens within split second. Okay, so uh, it is not as simple as just basically tapping, uh, oh, then the, then the money will go. So there's a lot of check that is being done uh, from the moment you tap, okay, they will actually transfer the information to the bank. Okay, then from the bank, they will approve, they will make sure that you have money inside your bank account, then they will come back to, 
this particular uh, merchant, you know, so they have a lot of all this authentication that have to be approved. So imagine just like all this thick, they have to be thick, uh, everything thick, then you can, then the, the, the process can be uh, processed. But right now you can see that when you tap, within a few seconds, they tell you, okay, approve. So all that actually comes with technology. Uh. Without technology, again, this will not have been possible. So for the e-commerce solution, right, we want to talk about this thing called a visa checkout. Okay, visa checkout. Do you still remember the days whereby when you buy anything, you have to fill up all your credit card information, da, 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 and things like that. You know, right now, all you need to do is you just need to create an account and every time you just need to go and click the checkout button. Yeah, then your money is gone. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So they, they, they basically learn how to suck your money away like, in a much faster way. So Visa Direct, okay, actually offers real-time push payment capabilities to business owner and consumer. Okay, what do I mean by real-time push payment? Uh? Real-time push payment basically means that money is being transferred immediately. Okay, immediately, similar to your pay now. All right, uh, but of course, we are talking about business point of view. Uh. So money is being transferred on a real-time basis. So Visa Direct is available to online marketplace using Stripe. So for example, okay, I just wanted to share with you the key point. Standard payment from Stripe, okay, normally it will take a few days to process. So for example, if you're using Stripe for your business and things like that, you realize that it actually takes a few days for you to actually receive the money. Yeah, but some of the vendors, what they want is they want to collect the money immediately. Okay, so in order for them to do that, they actually incorporate Visa Direct with their Stripe payment. Uh, so within the Stripe, Okay, if you want to be able to collect money upfront, then you then then you can actually use these Visa Direct services, whereby uh payment is you know basically over here la, People will be able to receive payment immediately, you know, on their Visa debit card. So that is how amazing it is la. Like I said, that's why even with PayPal, even with Stripe and all these uh, competitor out there, you know, they 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 are still trying to move towards the direct uh real time push payment. So this is something that you really need the infrastructure, you need the, uh, the database la, and the capability to do it. So many of them are actually still working with Visa in order for them to come up with all this feature. So that is why even with all these new uh, FinTech and, and company coming out, like I said, Visa is still uh, in a very good position la, because they actually are much ahead than many of the other digital payment company. So right now we want to look at the financial fitness also. So just now was just purely based on theory and facts and yeah, yeah, numbers. Lah. So right now we look at the seven financial check. Number one, we want to make sure that this company, like I said, since they are so good, the revenue should be growing. Okay, the earnings per share should be positive as well. The free cash flow, okay, that the money that they receive inside their bank account should be also growing. The return on equity is more than 15%, net margin more than 10% interest coverage more than five and of course the last one okay which is on the valuation the peg should be less than two so coming to this let's start with the first one okay uh growing revenue so we can see from 2010 all the way to 2018 uh, sorry 2019 in fact up to today the revenue has been growing year to year okay every single year you can see how how much this company has been making more and more money okay then of course moving forward so this is a pass. Positive earnings per share. So again, from the left to the right, you can see that the number has been increasing. Okay, so it basically means that this company, in terms of the net profit, is increasing as well. Then, of course, this is a pass again. Then the last one, the third one, growing free cash flow. So you look at the cash flow. Okay, immediately you can see that this is this is this is crazy. Uh, from two thousand to about eleven or twelve thousand in terms of millions. So this is twelve billion. So again, this is a pass. So growing revenue, positive earnings per share, free cash flow, everything is, is perfect. Uh, return on equity, more than 15%. You can see if you were to focus on the last few years, this company not only is the ROE above 15%, you can see that the ROE is increasing. Okay, the ROE is increasing. Now, which means that the company is doing better and better and better and better in terms of the uh, money management, okay, the use of the capital. So definitely this is a pass. Uh, net margin, okay, more than 10%. Uh, this company, net margin is 52%. If you focus on the last figure, 52%. Okay, so which means that every dollar that they collected, uh, their net profit is half of it. Okay, that is how crazy this company is. So definitely this is going to be a pass. 
And of course, interest coverage, we want to look at the debt level. Is this company able to pay off the debt and the interest? Okay, based on the latest Visa interest coverage is 30, 33 years. So which means that uh, based on whatever money that they are making this year, they are able to pay off 33 years of their interest. Okay, so again, anything more than five is safe. 33 is super, super, super safe. Okay, so no issue on that. And of course, coming to the last one, which is PEG to be less than two, we want to know right now, is this company expensive or is it relatively cheap in terms of the valuation? Okay, so we have the PE ratio right now, which is at 35 for Visa. And of course, I actually use a growth rate of 20%, okay, based on historical. And of course, moving forward, this is my personal opinion. Okay, I believe that Visa is able to grow at a growth rate of 20% moving forward. So using the PEG formula, which is your PE ratio divided by the growth rate, we can see that the PEG is 1.75. So anything less than two, it is good to go. So again, this is a pass. Okay, this is a pass for Visa. So just to summarize to you guys, this is a company that gives you a, a full green, okay, in terms of revenue, in terms of net income, in terms of cash flow, in terms of management, in terms of margin, in terms of debt, in terms of valuation. Everything is everything is green. Okay, so if you like what you are seeing right now, can you type it eight eight eight? Okay, eight eight eight. In Chinese, it means what what what. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So, so far, okay, this is of course something that I really like, lah. I mean, other than uh, of course, I I know that people are using Visa, Visa is everywhere and things like that, but the numbers is still something that is is. Cannot, cannot lie, you know, it's, it's a fact out there. And we can see based on the trend, uh, this company is just, it's just amazing. So I'm going to summarize, okay, with the buy, uh, the reason to buy as well as the summary of uh, some of the reason to sell. Okay, so first of all, I would say that Visa has a commanding market share in a scalable industry. So it's very easy for them to actually scale up. In fact, they have already reached, you know, pretty much the whole market. Uh, so, uh, how they can actually monetize it. There's so many ways that they can actually monetize it moving forward. There's actually still plenty of runway for growth in electronic payment, which surpassed cash payment on a global basis only a couple of years ago. Okay, so again, uh, digital payment, it is still growing up. Okay, not every country is fully digitalized. Okay, of, of course, we can see that in China, everything is using already using digital payment. But in many other countries right now, I would say that it's about maybe 40 to 50%. Uh, using digital payment. So again, from using cash to transfer to digital, that is a huge potential growth. And even for those of you who are already using digital payment uh, with e-commerce right now, online shopping and things like that, uh, it's going to make it even easier. Lah. So as a business owner, for those of you who actually own a business, you want to be able to collect your money upfront. You want to be able to have customers from uh, everywhere in the whole wide world. You want to have customers from Australia, customers from Israel, customers from uh, South Africa, customers from uh, Antarctica. You know, everything is feasible only if you can collect money. So again, Visa make it possible for you to actually collect money uh, even to a certain extent of real time. Every time somebody actually buys your product, you receive the money immediately. So that is, again, a huge potential out there. The scalable nature of the business should allow Visa to improve its really impressive margin. Like I said, the net margin is already amazing, 50 over percent, you know, but moving forward, I believe that it will continue to be uh, that good, okay, uh, if not better. So these are all the, basically the good point about this company. And of course, we are also going to talk about some of the negative or rather the not so good point about Visa. So Visa leading market share creates more opportunity for lot than for loss than gain. So like I said, because they are the best, so uh, there's more downside like, rather than the upside. Uh, so of course that is how you see it like. And of course the oligopolistic nature of the industry makes Visa and Mastercard targets for regulators. So uh, pretty much Visa and Mastercard they are the two bigger player in terms of digital payment uh, as well as the network. So a lot of all this regulation will actually affect them immediately. All right, but of course, uh, having said that, because the government to a certain extent have to depend on them as well, okay, uh, to open up, okay, you can see that the how how the whole country actually advances and things like that also have to place a part in terms of the digital payment, how the country actually digitize all these things. So I would say that 
uh, although yes, it can be a bad point, but at the same time, it could be a good point as well. So there's always both uh, part of the story. And of course, for the last one is Union Pay provides an example of how governments could favor local networks and this could shut Visa out of some emerging market opportunities. So again, like what happened in Singapore, Singapore government came up with this pay now. So like I said, this one, I can't guarantee, okay, but based on what I read, pay now is not from Visa, it's not from MasterCard. Okay, uh, it should be developed uh, in-house, okay. But uh, yeah, this is basically, these are some of the, I would say, less, less customer, la, less customer for Visa. La. So as more and more government do things in-house, you know, it, it simply means that Visa will have less business. Mm. So these are again some of the relatively not so good point. Okay, but we can see that in Singapore, although the payment transfer and all that is through pay now, but uh, with your public transport and things like that, you know, we can't really escape using Visa. Can you imagine right now if life is without Visa, uh, your credit card and everything, you have to pay cash, you, you know, just, just remove the whole digital payment in our life. You realize that it's, it's actually quite difficult. Like we are already kind of getting used, already getting used to it and using it more and more often. You know, suddenly if we remove digital payment, uh, just think of your buying, buying your stuff online. Like you can't really buy. Uh, even, even if you want to buy a food, right now a lot of payment, for example, Deliveroo and things like that, many of them still accept uh, payment on cash through cash, but moving forward could be everything through uh, digital payment. Uh, so which means that you won't be able to actually uh, pay uh, cash on delivery. So these are also some of the things that is going to uh, change. So again, so of course, very important is, is this going to be a BUY or is this going to be a BYE? Like I said, okay, today is definitely going to be a buy. Uh, okay, today is definitely going to be a buy. So if you also personally think that this is a great company to invest in, can you just put in BUY, BUY? Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. Yes, like what Jackson has also mentioned, yeah, the COVID-19 has actually helped contactless payment even more faster uh, to move even faster and further. In fact, I, I wanted to actually get, uh, I've forgotten to get the, the news whereby people actually say that, you know, uh, cash is a way to actually spread COVID-19. <laughs> uh, so people are actually using less, less uh, cash. Lah. Yeah, so of course, with your credit card, uh, it, it is a lot safer. It is also COVID-19 free. <laughs> so, yeah, that is also something that escalates. So I think, yes, with the COVID-19, like I said, it actually uh, speed up the whole uh, take-up rate of the digital payment. So which means that moving forward, uh, the growth of this is going to be even faster. Yeah, and of course, with Visa being the world leaders, uh, the leading uh, digital payment company, they are actually here. Uh, and I see that moving forward, they have still a huge runway to actually grow. Lah. Okay, they still have a huge runway to actually grow. So. Yeah, this is basically my analysis on Visa. Okay, again, uh, that's, that's the end of my sharing. So for those of you who actually would like more resources, if you are still not inside our Telegram group, okay, if you are still not getting your watch list, shopping list, please go and join our Telegram, t.me slash Ultimate Investor SG. And of course, please help to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get to receive, you know, the latest notification of our buy or buy series. Okay, and uh, of course, any interesting facts, Okay, we will also put it into the Facebook group as well as the YouTube channel. So I hope you guys love today's sharing. Okay, I hope it has been uh, something that is really insightful for you guys. Uh, for me, I think definitely when I was doing this research, I, I actually learned quite a lot. Okay, and I hope that it definitely has benefited you guys as well. So yeah, so I hope you guys can continue to support our Buy or Buy series. Do share with your friends uh, and, yeah, and just basically yeah, let them know like, that Actually, we, what we want to do over here is we want to make complicated uh, investment knowledge. We want to try to make it as easy as possible for anybody to be able to digest. All right. So with that, okay, I thank everyone for coming. Okay. If you have any question, okay, if you have any question with regards to, to this company or any of the other company that we have actually discussed before, I have actually put up a Q&A link on the Telegram. Okay. So join the Telegram. There will be a Q&A link. You can actually put in your question inside the uh, Padlet, okay, which is a link. Okay, and then we will be able to answer your questions from there on so that everybody will be able to benefit from it. All right. So with that, 
thanks everyone for joining me on a Saturday afternoon. Okay, really appreciate your time. Okay, and uh, invest safe, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next buy or buy series next week. All right, so see ya.